Hello, my name is Jody, and I would like to tell you a story about my interesting friend, the Slow Loris. To help you relax before you go to sleep, I don't know if you know what a Slow Loris is, but you do. And if you do know, that's just wonderful. And if you don't know what a Slow Loris is, that's okay too because it is easy to know what a slow loris is. A slow loris is a cute and cuddly, furry little monkey type creature who will never grow bigger than a cat and likes to move very slowly. This slow loris lives in a forest with her best friend, Tortoise, who lives in the den right beside hers. If you were to meet Slow Loris in person, she would tell you she is Slow Loris, the slowest one in the forest. And that's what everybody says. Because besides being slow, talking about how slow she is, is her favorite thing to do. Her friend, the tortoise, is almost as slow as her, almost but not quite. Loris knows this because at least once a day she challenges the tortoise to a race to see who is the slowest. At least once per day the tortoise and the Loris race from the openings of their dens side by side below the big wiggly leafed tree to the round stone in the middle of the path, and whomever gets there first loses the race and is not the slowest one, and the tortoise always makes it to the round stone in the middle of the path first. This would be the end of the story if nothing else ever happened but this, but one day something else did happen, and this is why I have more story to tell you about my friend, the slow Loris. The happening began after her afternoon nap, when slow Loris came out of her den to sit in the cool shade of the wiggly-leafed tree and wait for her friend, the tortoise, to wake up too, so she may challenge him to a race to the round rock in the middle of the path and in the middle of the path, between the door of her den and the round stone, was an animal she had never seen before. It was long and shaggy gray, with a round black and white face, and the longest toenails she had ever seen, and it was just there, sleeping in the middle of her path. She went up this strange new animal and asked it quite loudly, Who are you and why are you sleeping in the middle of my pathway? The animal yawned and scratched its side with its amazingly long fingernails and spoke in a low, slow voice. I am not sleeping. I am only taking a break because I am a three-toed sloth and I like to rest often. Loris didn't know what a three-toed sloth was, but you might know. And if you don't know what a three-toed sloth is, that's perfectly okay and just fine because it is very easy to know what a three-toed sloth is. A three-toed sloth is also a monkey-like creature that comes in a variety of colors, including green. Yes, including green, has very long finger and toenails, shaggy fur, and is more closely related to the anteater than the monkey, and is reported to be the slowest animal on earth and will never grow 
to be bigger than a dog as long as the dog is more of a big dog than a small dog. And now, here this animal was in the middle of the path outside of Loris's home, and she wasn't sure if it was a good thing or a bad thing, but something about this thing caused her to feel she didn't like this thing at all. I am Slow Loris, she told the sloth, the slowest animal in the forest, and that's what everybody says. You can be on your way now, because you are in the way now. The sloth closed his eyes for a moment or two, yawned, and then finally replied, Okay, very well then, if I am not welcome here, I will move on. And the sloth stretched out one long, shaggy arm ever so slowly, and rested it on the path, digging his long fingernails into the firmly packed dirt. And then he didn't seem to move at all for a few seconds, unless you are paying attention to one of his hind legs that was beginning to curl up a little bit. Loris was feeling very impatient and would have liked very much to have this new animal out of the way before the tortoise woke up and tried to make friends with him. So she said to the sloth, Be on your way then, as you said you would be. We like things to be peaceful and stay the same around here, and we don't want any trouble. The sloth so very slowly lifted his head to look at her and said, I am on my way. This is as fast as I can go. Loris squeezed her eyes shut and felt a sinking feeling in the pit of her belly. Just as she heard the tortoise coming up behind her, saying, Oh my goodness, what is it we have here? Good day to you, new friend. Loris turned to the tortoise. This is a three-toed sloth, and he is on his way in a hurry to be someplace else. In a hurry? Tortoise asked, speaking to the sloth. Whatever would you want to do that for? Why not rest a while here and tell us a little bit about yourself and where you come from? Because it is time for our race, Loris interrupted, and I'm sure the sloth wouldn't be interested in having a race when he is very busy and has other places he needs to be. Nonsense, the turtle snapped back, grinning from ear to ear as if he had any ears, which he must have had because he could hear very well. I'm sure Sloth would enjoy a little sport in the middle of the afternoon, wouldn't you, dear fellow? Sloth nodded, very slowly, of course, and answered, Yes, I suppose I would. How would I run this race? Tortoise explained the unusual rules, and just as he was finishing, Slow Loris interrupted him. We begin at our front doors, and you don't have a front door, Mr. Sloth, so I'm sorry, you won't be able to join in. The Sloth scratched his head with his unusually long fingernails for a brief moment, and then answered, I could start the race from where I am now, and that would give you both a head start or a hind start because I am almost at the round stone in the middle of the path already. Well, it's settled then, said Tortoise, as he turned to go back to his den. Loris felt a little bit better and a little bit more confident as she crawled to the door of her den and positioned herself, ready to go very 
very slowly. Surely this will be easy, she thought. The sloth is already almost all the way to the round stone in the middle of the path. And Tortoise said ready, set, go, just the way he always did, and the race was on. Loris moved more slowly than she ever had before in her entire life, yet within the hour she was already beside the sloth who was barely moving at all. So she slowed down even more, till she had to focus every ounce of her energy on concentrating on moving everything on herself, just the tiniest little bits. The sun moved lower in the sky, and the shadows in the forest grew long as the sun began to set, growing more and more impatient with each moment that passed. She realized she was creeping past the sloth and didn't care, because she had grown very bored and just wanted the race to be over. So she scurried up to the round stone in the middle of the path, where the tortoise was waiting to cheer them on, and she pushed it firmly with both hands before marching off into the underbrush, fur bristling and huffing and puffing until she was sounding positively squeaky. She may have heard Tortoise calling after her, but she didn't care about that either, because all she wanted to do right now is get away from both of them, and get away from them she did, until she became quite lost in the underbrush and it was very dark time night out before she found her way out and could see with her large, round, orange eyes she was surrounded by grass and knew she must be in a place she had heard of before, a place called the meadow beside the wood. The grass was softer and so much easier to move through compared to the thick prickles and thorns of the underbrush. So, she walked out into the meadow to see if she could see anywhere she may spend the night. She felt very lonely and whimpered quietly to herself as she made her way through the long, soft grasses. When she did stop whimpering, from time to time, the sound would still go on without her. Such was her misery, or so she thought, until it dawned on her she was not the only thing unhappy in the meadow this night. She followed the sound from the other sad animal until she came upon a bunny sitting in the grass outside of her hole. What's wrong? Loris asked suddenly, as she climbed through the last of the grass between them. The rabbit startled and then froze, as still as a statue. This made Loris feel just a little bit uncomfortable, so she cleared her throat <clears throat> and asked, more politely. Excuse me, ma'am, could you please tell me what is the matter? The rabbit unfroze and eyed Loris, peering at her through the darkness. What are you? she asked suspiciously. I'm slow Loris, slow Loris answered, trying to look brave. I'm the slowest animal in the forest and that's what everybody says. Even as she said it, she didn't feel quite right about herself, 
but at least it was nice to see the bunny smile. Oh, a slow loris, said the bunny. I've heard slow lorises are very nice people. We are, replied loris, feeling the not quite right feeling again. I'm so glad you're here. I'm terribly thirsty, and the stream is just over there. I would like to have a drink of water before I go to bed, but my children are sleeping below, and I would never leave them, not for a moment. Could you guard my hutch while I nip over to the stream? I would be most grateful. Loris told her she would be glad to help, and when the mother rabbit returned, she invited Loris to spend the night with her and her babies. Loris gladly accepted the invitation and followed the mother underground through a long tunnel into the dark den full of furry little sleeping bodies. Even with her large, round, orange eyes, she had trouble seeing in so much darkness. But the mother bunny managed to move aside a couple of babies without waking them up too much and guided Loris gently into her sleeping spot where she curled up and felt instantly very comfortable and very at home. As she drifted off to sleep, she noticed how her breathing was so much slower than the quick little huffs and puffs and soft snores surrounding her. When she woke up, the den was empty and only a faint trace of light across the room told her where the exit was. Above ground, mother and six babies were happily munching grass around the hole. Loris stayed with this family for many days and grew to love them all very much. She spent most of her time caring for and playing with the babies who were growing up so fast. In the beginning, she would try to figure out who was the fastest one and who was the slowest one. But the bunnies were faster on some days and slower on others, and it all became too confusing. So she gave up and learned to just enjoy them the way they were. Only one thing happened that could be considered exciting or interesting. The mother rabbit was below ground, having an afternoon nap and Loris was watching the children. Off in the distance, she saw an animal moving towards them at an unnerving rate of speed, and it didn't take Loris very long to figure out this animal was a dog. Dog, she shouted very quickly, and herded the children underground, and it wasn't until they were all in the lair and a head count had been completed, that Loris was able to take the time to be surprised at how quickly she could move if she really needed to move quickly. It was after this happened that night that Loris noticed something else as well. Things were becoming uncomfortable and crowded in their home. The babies were getting quite big now, and there just wasn't enough room for everybody anymore. This was the first time in a long time Loris felt homesick. She spent the next day being loving and kind and paying very close attention to what she had come to think of as her adopted children. As the day wore on and night time grew near, she realized she did not want to sleep, 
stuffed into the bunny den this night and would prefer to sleep in the home she had left behind. When she told Mother Bunny of this, Mother Bunny was alarmed and argued, You can't leave now. It will be dark soon, and you might get lost. I don't think so, Laura said with a little smile. I think if I hurry, I will be home before bedtime. And then added, it's not so very far away that I will not be able to come visit from time to time. The mother bunny looked sad but nodded. It's okay. I understand. Please come back and visit often. Loris promised she would and gave all of them a long, warm hug and then set out across the meadow towards the sunset and the woods. She wasn't very far into her journey when she came across a little mouse hiding in the grass beside the path. The mouse asked her if she would escort him to the forest because owls like to hunt at sunset and she would be big enough to keep the owls away and keep him safe. She told him to walk close by her side, almost under her belly, and agreed this would keep him safe until he was in the woods. She had to slow down just a little bit because the mouse's tiny little legs were having a hard time keeping up. What are you? the mouse asked, scurrying along beside her. Loris simply answered, I'm a Loris, and then checked with her feelings and noticed she felt really good about herself when she said this. The mouse seemed impressed. Oh, a Loris, he said. I've heard Lorises are super nice people. We can be. I do the best I can. And as she said this, she checked in again with her feelings and enjoyed feeling good about herself again. And this is the time when the mouse and the loris reached the edge of the woods and the mouse asked, Where do you live? I live under the tree with the wiggly leaves near the round stone in the middle of the path. Loris told him. The round stone in the middle of the path, the mouse repeated, sounding optimistic. I live under the tree with the pointy leaves, by the bend in the path. Loris was pleased as well, because they were practically neighbors. The mouse was pointing just off to their right with his tiny little forepaw. There is a way through the underbrush over here. We should be home in a few minutes. And now Loris was extremely pleased and quite relieved she would not have to push through the thorny underbrush again. And with the trip now being this easy, she would be able to visit Mother Rabbit and the baby bunnies as often as she would like to. And the mouse was completely correct. They were at the path between the round stone and the bend within a few minutes. She bid him good night and promised to visit him first thing tomorrow morning before taking the short walk home. Just as she was arriving, she saw the back end of her dear friend, the tortoise, going into his den for the night. She called out to him and hurried over as fast as she could. Tortoise looked happy to see her, and more than that, just a little bit surprised at how fast she was moving. They greeted each other warmly and had a little chat to catch up on the news and happenings of the time she had been away. 
It turns out the sloth was just passing through, and he did it so slowly, no one noticed that was what he was doing until long after he had gone, and nothing exciting or even interesting had happened besides that. They both agreed it was getting late, and they both were tired, and it would be best to spend time together after they had rested and slept, so they could be at their best and really enjoy their time together. Just as Loris was getting ready to go into her den, her heart sank in her chest, and she had a funny feeling in her tummy. She thought of her den as too big and empty for tonight, and suddenly felt very lonely. She asked Tortoise if he could sleep over with her for this night, so she would not be too lonely without the bunnies. He said he would be glad to, and they soon made themselves comfortable in Loris's den that was just the way she had left it. And as she was drifting off to sleep, thinking about how nice it was to have so many friends, Tortoise whispered to her, I'm sorry, I'm not soft and warm and fuzzy like your bunny friends. And Loris spoke softly, You are soft and warm and fuzzy to me, my dear friend. You are very soft and warm and fuzzy to me. And they both closed their eyes and just allowed themselves to breathe deeply and evenly, slowly and softly allowing their muscles to become more and more relaxed as each moment went by, and they just allowed their minds to drift and wander as they watched whatever it was they saw on the backs of their closed eyelids, and very soon they were deeply and most pleasantly asleep, and as they relaxed more deeply, they slipped off deeper to sleep, deeper to sleep, and deeper to sleep, and they enjoyed having a long, sound sleep full of interesting dreams about things they liked to dream about. knowing everything is all right now, and everything is just fine, as they sleep, going deeper to sleep, deeper to sleep, deeper to sleep, and deeper to sleep.